here. Like, even that series against Mana could have gone either way. But the fact that he is here is impressive, because Goblin is definitely a guy that likes to turn it on, and when he does, he does it in Goblin fashion. Like, he was one of those Phoenix lads for a long, long time, and he was very, very good at it. So when it, when he is on point, he's a fun player to watch. And spawning over in the bottom left-hand side, as our red Proros, it is Gobbers. Gobbers. What's up, right? <laughs> I don't know. I really like the fact you called him Gobbers. <laughs> <laughs> In the top right, though, a few Terran player from Team Liquid is Clem. I, I don't know what we call Clem. Clem has. <laughs> it doesn't ah, really Clem work. is a good one. No, it it, I mean, Gob Gobbers is obviously top that's, tier. That's, that's top tier, yeah. That is uh, top tier nonsense right there. But um, yeah, this is probably. <sighs> I don't want to jinx Goblin, because this absolutely, like. Clem is one of the best DVPs on the planet, and he gets to play with one of the best PVTs on the planet literally every week with Max Packs, right? Multiple times, be it on EU, NA, you name it. That's a lot of good practice. He's practicing a lot with Mana as well, just like training him up in his PVT. This is a, a seriously scary opponent. Probably the scariest, well, I would say the scariest opponent Goblin could run into in this group. Yeah, no, I mean, Clem is, in my eyes, he's genuinely the favorite to just go out and kind of win this whole thing. I mean, there's no several this season. Reynolds playing from Korea. Yeah, Max Beck can absolutely kind of take it out against Clem, but there's just something about Clem when it comes to these events. But he just steps it up that level, right? So, and yeah, I feel like, you know, Goblin takes a map every now and then off of um, Max Beck's and the PvP and so on. But Clem almost always is just going to be like a difficult one to take a map off, never mind a full series. So, I do think this is going to be a challenge. I do think this is going to be tough for Goblin. I'm very curious to see if he does just kind of approach this in a very standard, like, hey, I'm just going to macro away. Or if he is more so going to be like, oh, dear, like, this is not going to be pretty. Let's try and get the cheesy uh, playbook out and, you know, call up a couple of plays from there. Yeah, like, the, the Goblin that I know is a guy that, even though he can be cheeky, like he has done in the past, for me, he's very much a guy that, hey, he's liked Stargate play uh, a lot in the past, but... He does tend to follow like a similar pattern in his games. Like he has a lot of faith in his builds, plays a lot of games with the same builds, but it's because he's good at them. And right now we got a double cyclone opening from Clem with a CC on the high ground and starting off a second barracks very early as well. So it's not going to be like uh, some three CC play just yet, but it is going to be very, very heavy emphasis on minerals uh, for, for the time being. And so far, just looking at how these builds collide, Definitely like where Clem's going with this one. Yeah, Cyclone pressure against Stargate almost always feels good, right? I mean, you build an Oracle, Cyclones will push that back easily. Phoenix, not necessarily as much. And that's simply for the fact that obviously the Phoenix can lift the Cyclones and take some of their DPS away. Uh, but obviously it really depends on how early it is, because right now we're only just about to have our first Phoenix. The uh, Cyclones actually back away from the center there. The Adept does not shade. And so Clem will continue to the bottom left and look to apply this pressure in the next couple of moments. These Adepts are about to walk into trouble, but they make it a shade, and so they will actually keep themselves safe. This is a moment where Clem does have to be careful, because that Phoenix has not revealed itself yet. And I mean, Clem, he, he's one smart cookie, man. Like, I think he's done this build because he kind of knows what Goblin does tend to go for, and we'll see it for the rest of the series if he does similar stuff. But this, putting on this kind of pressure against a Phoenix opener, it is something that, yeah, yeah, as a Phoenix guy, you want to have your Phoenix across the other side of the map. Because if you actually look at Goblin's vision at this stage in the game, he doesn't know what this is being followed up by. And and Phoenix need to know. You need to get a grip on what's going on behind this. Yeah. No, I mean, he's uh, he's kind of blind in that. You're right, because Clem's going to have all the pressure here. It's going to be very tough for him to find that out. Super Battery does just about save that Stalker. So just going to be... Uh... Yeah, nicely handled as we just have Stim, Combat Shield, all of that coming through. And obviously Clem very ready to play into that bio play nice and quickly. Yeah, and this, this is really the kind of freedom that you get when you go for a very... Oh, I mean, uh, it, it's like a trapping opening, really, from Clem. Like, if you played against Blink Stalkers, would you be able to do this? Absolutely not. Like, it's... Yeah. It, it feels like he had a good read on what was going on. And maybe Goblin will finally be able to get out on the map, but he has to be careful with these Phoenix from this point on. Like, they're a very valuable valuable unit, but he is going up against a guy that 
I get the feeling has a very good read on what he's up to. Clem's getting these turrets as well, which is like, has he seen anything? Remember, he didn't scout with a, a Reaper or anything like that. He just came across the map push, but he's already getting turrets in place here. So this makes me think that the predictability of old in Goblin is something that Clem is very, very aware of and very capable of being uh, the leader against. Yep. <clears throat> No, I'm with you. It's uh, really looking as though uh, Clem is looking comfortable. I mean, now pushing in just a game before Goblin really is ready with anything. So this third base is in trouble. The Phoenix are out across the map. A couple of SCVs go down, but now we're going to have to recall this. The third base is cancelled. I'm going to go ahead and say it's a disaster. Cancelled third for two SCVs is just not pretty at all. It's not pretty at all. And PVT is a brutal matchup for a lot of reasons. Like, Terrence can have a whole array of openings. Some of them can fall absolutely flat if against the wrong thing, but some of them can absolutely reign supreme. And I think Clem knows that this Observer is here. I mean, these Cyclones uh, kind of give the game away. And again, Goblin is just, you want to be on three bases right now. Like you, you don't want to be the defender with Phoenix. They are a great unit, but they're a great aggressive unit. And the first Colossus is halfway done. And you see here, Clem's got a, few of marines in position here if the, the other third is taken and goblin is just getting absolutely strangled in this game so far and I, I don't know what he does from this point on just too far gone right like you can't let your third base get cancelled this repeatedly against terran who okay isn't on the fastest third base ever but it's not like clem was like overly aggressive here either this was not some crazy two base all in and goblin had to give up the third no this was just pressure, and it's pressure that's resulting in such a high amount of value from it. It's difficult to see where you, you're right. Where, what do you do as Goblin? You try and take the third again, you just tech up, and I guess you hope Clem takes a bad fight. You do not have a lot of kind of control in your own hands, though. This is kind of waiting on Clem to make a mistake at this point, which is never a good feeling. Ooh. It's never a good feeling, and th these Phoenix are starting to get a little bit of damage done on the other side of the map, but he needs quite a bit more considering how delayed this third is so let's have a look at the probe count 53 to 52 clem reaching his 1-1 one -one upgrades goblin's done a good job of macroing just on these two bases uh to be absolutely fair to him and that phoenix count getting up to eight is scary like that absolutely can turn a fight if utilized very very well and clem i don't i'm not sure he wants to take a fight out in the open here especially not with all these chokes available and stuff. And he does need some more meat in his army, like the Marauders, which he does back up with. Um, and now he's going to start going for the Ghost Academy as well, before the Armory. So very much about getting three Ghosts out very, very quickly. And that will absolutely spell problems for Goblin. Because Goblin, I don't think he's thinking too much about five minutes from now. He's more thinking about, okay, okay, I've, I've got to go. I've got to go and sort him out so he starts getting this warp prism to reinforce but once those ghosts are on the field that's <laughs> that's going to make short work of this army yeah no ghost viking is the combination that really just shuts this all down and especially when goblin hasn't been able to kind of you know beef up his own army himself because of that lack of economy early that delayed third base has that knock-on effect but yes what he has right here is not bad but again the size of it is about to become a problem when emps land on it the viking count gets a little bit higher Clem is on the verge of being in a very good position against this, and I think that's something which uh, Goblin is very close to realizing as well, which he's, you know, he's going to take a fourth, he's going to take extra gates, but I like that he stays on the map, because I feel like he does want to try and poke and find something before he kind of falls back and just tries to play the rest of this game. Absolutely. Uh, there are four Vikings being made at a time, so this number from six to ten, and then com in combination with uh, the MPs, these Phoenix, all the energy that they have that they haven't really been able to use, even these Cyclones sat in the main base over here. I mean, oh, has to be careful. Oh, one of them almost biting the dust there before any kind of fight begins. And that Ghost Count's climbing, Wardy. It really is. There's a bunch of Ghosts coming up as the Argonne can see a few Zelds already charging forwards. Turning around, a couple of EMPs dropping down. The Phoenix is going to come through as well. Going to go jumping onto the Vikings. So a little bit of action on that. Once again, plus two attack comes in. Karma comes up. Got all that on the way, and the next from Goblin is about to finish. So, yeah, he wants to. I mean, he's trying to progress his position. He's getting the Templar out as well, but 
problem is, I feel like Clem's army is already progressed. It's already ready, and I think Clem should be ready to move out on the map in a moment and take advantage of all these things that we've been building up for him. Also, if we look at the work count here, Clem on 69. Nice. And Goblin definitely trailing behind. He's got quite a lot of investment into upgrades on the way, but it really does feel like he's, he's banking on these Colossus really being his backbone. And Clem just has a counter to everything in that army right now with a superior economy as well it's uh it's a tricky one for him man it really is yep tricky 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 as a couple gates going through the plus two attack arm upgrade blank all coming about as we have again the army continuing to the upper left hand side the vikings are looking for a chance to maybe get onto these colossi quickly any free shots on colossi is a big plus we do emp the archons initially too uh, just because obviously if you knock colossus down early you don't have to fight through the phoenix to get them in the actual fight so no, I mean, if Goblin's to take a fight right now, just got kind of EMP'd, <laughs> wounded down quite a little bit. I like this little run by from him. We'll get some Zealots to cause a bit of distraction, but Clem, quick to react. It's just, even though Goblin's army is absolutely huge, it's not necessarily the biggest tech army, is it? Like, no. there's six Phoenix left on the field, three Colossus, three Archons, 28 Zealots. And this, this Terran army... It's 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 terrifying. Absolutely is. Like Goblin's gonna want to be on the map, look for trades with those zealots so he can actually get out some very high value units. But he has to he has to do it in a in a nice sort of way. Like he does have Clem pinned back, which is fantastic for him. But Clem, it's not as if he's slowing down in any department. CC is coming down, third starport. He's gonna look into getting range liberators as well with this, getting all the upgrades he can think of as well. He's sitting very pretty. Yep, looking very pretty indeed as the bio comes through, knocked down that dead. Vikings gonna go for the Phoenix, shooting away there. You can see the rest of the bio stimming up. These Zelts are gonna charge forwards. The Phoenix still taking a bunch of shots. I mean, the cutting backwards from Clem so far is just great. He's gonna knock down so many of the problems. I mean, the Claws I have barely fought in this fight so far. Uh, and, and these are just trades where Clem is gonna win out pretty much each and every time. Uh, so far, looking very good there. Oh, I, I like the attempt from Goblin there, the, the Disruptor in the mix. Very hard to see, but Clem yeah. responding very nicely. And now these Colossus, this is a Clem special where he's just marching backwards, just picking off this army. And even though it doesn't look that terrible for Goblin, you look at the supply and you're like, oh my goodness, it is working out for Clement. Yep. And we do have the, uh, the Libs on the way as well. So his army's only getting better. So if he is going to have to face Disruptors, Liberators help a lot with that because it just zones the Protoss army. And then it's very difficult for the Disruptors to ever sit in a far enough forward position to be useful. Goblin's going to attack in, but I mean, you're attacking into EMPs and Vikings and all sorts. I mean, it's just, I get it. Like, he's probably feeling a bit desperate and that he needs to find something. That Disruptor shot wow. is good, so that helps, but it's a long way off what he needs. I mean, if he can get a good three or more like that and he does have quite a few disruptors in the mix i mean he's working with mobility here but oh is this the fight you really want to take that's a lot of disruptors it's a lot of firepower as well blinks under the de liberators but there's not enough anti-air here wardy his army gets absolutely butchered and clem i think he's just going to chase this one down he's looking for it getting a big wraparound disruptors will get some okay shots off but clem he smells blood he does indeed, and he's going to chase it down. I mean, we kind of saw this coming, and especially Goblin just trying to force the fight himself. It was kind of doomed from the very beginning, as Clem now can just come all the way across the map. Disrupt a shot Ooh. there, dead center. I mean, that's something, and that does buy Goblin a few more moments, and maybe a bit of life in this game. He gets to chase the air units down, so a bunch of free supply, and Clem, oh, I thought he was just going to walk across the map and win. He's going to get held up for the moment. He certainly is. He's still ahead on SCVs, and, you know, he's keeping up in bases. In fact, he's very much keeping up in bases on 5 CC behind all this, and he's got more <laughs> orbitals to make if he does so, please. But again, what? how does Goblin rematch? He's got three Robo Facility, which he's absolutely been cranking out units on, but the gateway mass that he has... Oh, it, it, it's very problematic because right now, Clem, he can produce like five ghosts at a time, six libs at a time, and that will make short work of Goblin's army. Goblin does have, again, mobility. And how does he use it? He goes down this right avenue over here. Wants to keep Clem away for him. Yep, absolutely. If he can, uh, if he can just, he's playing this army right now where, yeah, you can kind of poke in and get out free. You don't have to be fully committed to a fight. So that gives you the time to build back up, right? And that's what he's going to aim for a little bit. He can disrupt it to force Clem back again. I like that, even blinking forwards. Goblin, really not afraid of the situation. He will play for every possible unit he can grab. 
Uh, so that's good to see. Clem is still chasing this. He believes he can get something of a catch, and he is going to find one disruptive. The target player and is there, but he actually decides to just keep fighting the stalkers instead. It's a lot of disruptors, and that is going to keep Clem at bay for now. Clem has to be careful here. Like he's ahead in supply, but it's not all here. And I mean, this stutter stepping, he will pick off these zealots one by one, but. These blinks forward are getting some high value trades. Now more ghosts join the army and EMPs are magnificent. Their regular damage is so good against the Zealots as well, though. Like, Goblin is trading, but he, he definitely needs more because once these Liberators come out and are fully online, he needs that army far away from him. Like, he can't get pinned back. I mean, this uh, army's actually in a bit of a weird spot. The Stalkers was blocking the uh, units from getting away through the gold mineral gap. So, for a moment, we got kind of held up. Clem keeps on splitting. He's been dodging most of these disruptors. They're starting to come off cooldown again. So, Goblin gets a few more shots, but he lost a lot in that fight because a lot of the Stalkers went down. And that's going to kind of bring us to this point now where Clem falling back once again, but has been, uh, again, definitely trading decently. Uh, resources lost is actually only just in favor of Clem, but he's also sitting on the five bases. Yeah, I mean, across the board, honestly, you look at everything, it's fairly even apart from the actual numbers of what's up and arguably the army quality of Goblin, but he's also now on his way to Colossi again. And I like that because that's something which provides stable, consistent splash damage throughout a fight. The only issue I see for Goblin is plus, well, it's 3-3 three, three bio, which is scary. Granted, he does have 3-3 three, three on his units as well. It's just plus two liberators. He's absolutely banking on being able to get a good fight against them, isn't he? Like, absolutely banking on it. Positionally, if he gets forced back on his side of the map, which is where we're fighting ourselves, this is where he doesn't want to be. This is Clem's playground now. There's choky avenues. He's also able to harass these bases with these lips. This this is the problem area for Gobbers. Yep, I would agree with that. As our Stalkers blink through, one, two, and three Liberators go down just as they get uh, sieged up, though. So that's a good start to the fight. We've seen our Stalkers Colossi going to fight as well. A couple of Marauders Marines getting chased away. And a couple of those Libs getting shot at it as well. So, again, Clem just can't seemingly get into the position to kind of truly end it. Which, to be fair, is kind of meant to be the problem against an army like this. That's why Goblin is on this army. It's very much so that scrappy army that keeps you alive and keeps you in it for an extended period of time. Even if, overall, it's maybe not the strongest of armies in a straight-up fight because you're so reliant on the Disruptors land. No, I mean, Goblin's actually holding his own. Like, I I've been expecting Clem just kind of run away with any one of these fights. And you do see that he's got libs set up on bases that he expected Goblin to have, but Goblin's very much taken the south side of the map. Lots of sensor towers. <laughs> Finally gets to see that observer that's been there the whole game, and he's now got quite a lot of Vikings online. They do have good upgrades against these Colossi, but that's a healthy number of Protoss. It, it really is. Yep, there is a lot of it. As the bio continues in from the upper right, we are going to see the CC landing down. The Vikings still coming through, the ghost coming up, planetary fortress building as well. Another CC is also producing. It's going to be seeing the stalkers there, going to get rid of that orbital. Now the double liberator going down as well. Turning around, Colossi like getting rid of a ghost as we go, and a couple more SCVs now getting dropped also. This is actually getting really scary for Clem. Like, these disruptors making magic happen, and his army that he has, he has to be so so focused on it doing all the right things at the right time because liberators on siege we've seen quite a lot of them go down and goblin's doing a good job of just utilizing his mobility here is it's like the one true strength he has if he starts teching into you know the blink dts of the world it's going to be hard for clem to really settle because that look how much brodos that is wardy it's a lot man and he, there's so many disruptors too as the vikings going to try and make a dive on the claws and he is starting to get them Again, those disruptors, they constantly push Clem back. So every time Clem seems to be kind of stepping forwards, the disruptors are like, no, 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 you don't get to just jump on me like this. And those Vikings are going to be with the Bioforce back in a way there. But they got rid of the Colossi and we're back to Zealot Stalker Disruptor. I love the Dark Shrine from Goblin. That's the kind of chaos later in this game that could absolutely go a long way, right? I mean, just having DTs harassed with are such a huge deal. DTs are massive, a massive thorn in the side of any Terran. And EMPs are kind of, you know, landing very sporadically here. We do have a few liberation zones here, so it's hard for Goblin to move forward. But I like this choice by Clem, just kind of expanding closer to where his opponent is expanding as well. Because having the fights where the bases, which your opponent would definitely not like you to have, allows your rally to be there. These disruptors definitely a pain, though. Yep, they're still moving about. We see a couple more stalkers being shot at. Bio still firing. 
Another disruptor shot comes through as well. Not quite going to land just yet. It's another disruptor shot, and the Bioforce has to dance to the side one more time. It's such a low marine count for Clem. It's just all value units, like 18 rows. That is a lot of stalkers blinking under a lot of libs, but they are all EMP down. They're also accompanied by a bunch of marauders, and Clem is splitting all over the shop. Oh, I was going to say mitigating as much disruptor damage as he can, but Goblin absolutely fighting back. Resources lost is so damn close as well. 33 apiece, but that's a big disruptor. That, oh, that absolutely had potential to swing this fight. And now Clem has to be very careful about this wraparound here. Yes, he does. A couple more libs getting set up to the top side. Just trying to kind of play this from all directions. And obviously it's difficult to get the libs to jump. It's funny because... The libs play so slowly in comparison to the Stalker Disruptor. We're actually going to go blinking forwards here, so Goblin believes he's got enough. Clem has quite a few Marauders under there, but as the Zealot show up, maybe not enough to keep it going. Clem's Bioforce in general could do with a few more reinforcements as these Stalkers will take down Liberators one at a time. Obviously, we fall back to a planetary Fortress that will help against these Zealots as well, but then there's going to be Disruptors that can hit the Mineral Line. Clem already evacuates the SCVs, realizing that that was going to be a problem. Yeah, Goblin, he's actually... Clem's probably got not the best read on this situation like he is kind of struggling for supply he's constantly spending all his bank here as well whereas goblin his pro counts decently low at this stage and clem does get to spot this little base down here that is a nice spot for liberators being able to find out about but i, I think clem in his mind he's like you must have lots of workers here if we continue fighting but it, it's not actually that bad he's just got a massive army supply so these fights for goblin as long as he keeps not doing bad in them he's actually he just needs to keep Clem on the move. Can't let that Liberator count get too high. Well, Stalkers blink across the right-hand side. Bio will stim up again. A bunch of these Stalkers continue to drop. The Vikings are going to be here as well. And we just have Clem. I mean, again, it feels like right now Clem's army is quite small. You just need some reinforcements to come across, I guess. Obviously, this is a fight on one of these Protoss bases, although that's a place that Clem eventually wants himself, most likely. This time, a lot of the Liberators are preemptively sieged up, so it's going to be a lot more expensive to come pushing into this. Disruptor shot still forcing the Terran player to take steps away. Another Liberator has gone down, and this just continues. These two just dueling until the bitter end in this game one. And resources lost have, and yet again, 42.6k versus 42.8k. Like, they're trading so damn closely. It, it, it feels like Clem's economy should be better, considering that he has how many orbitals at this point? Nine orbitals on the map? But Goblin... He is just a, a real warrior with this army. Like, seven disruptors, lots of zealot stalkers. It's a very simplistic army in that sense, but he is absolutely throwing everything he has at Clem right now. Yes, he is. The bio gets the disruptor. A couple of zealots going down. Another disruptor shot up the ramp. We see another one flying through as well, trying to get as much done as we can. Libs will continue over to the right-hand side. So many zealots warping in suddenly from Goblin, as he's also going to try and expand to the left, somewhere he's not really been to yet, so would love to try and grab that. There's a couple of lip shots coming through, probes taking damage, the fire force backing it away a little bit as well. Yeah, you, you can really feel like Cl uh, Goblin's doing a good job of just buying time, like the constant disruptors. It is going to be the liberators that, you know, the disruptors can't shoot them, meaning that the liberators are the absolute best unit against them. And the thing is, it's a brittle army. Like, one wrong move out of Goblin, and that's it. All those Stalkers just absolutely bite the dust, and you see everything's getting shredded. Lovely flank attempt, though. That will keep the units in place here, and Goblin gets a fairly decent cleanup. It's it's not it's not a cheap cleanup, but at least it gets him some more very valuable time. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, time is uh, kind of something you need on your side right now. As... Uh... Time is uh, really your best friend, the triple obs over here, man. We are going to see Alcyone with every single map taken. How about that? Is uh, th th every single base taken? I, that's not really what I expected coming into this at all, especially the way this game started. Need I remind us that we start off in such a rough spot? Poor Goblin. That is crazy. It's really crazy. Nice disruptor on the left side there. That's the kind of stuff that Goblin really needs and. Disruptors getting sniped before they get any sort of pop-off here, and Clem realizing, okay, okay, that's a lot of explosions, but I think a good seven or so died just then. Now the DT Zealot hit squad over here on a PF base. 
not or at an orbital base, not a PF base. Mind my uh, language there. Uh, lots of liberators do show up though. They will absolutely make short work of this run by attempt. Resources still so close lost between these two, but Goblin is definitely mining more of this split map scenario. He's playing like a Zerg here. Yeah, no, he uh, he really is playing a bit like a Zerg, isn't he? He is just, I mean, he's just taking so much of the map. He's playing all over the map as well, right? I think is what this is coming down to. So, Ooh. oh, disruptor shots <laughs> still hitting. It, where, where's Clem's army? Like it's it's not it's not over here right now. It definitely feels like the warping mechanic here, being able to warp in on the left or warp in on the right, is helping Goblin out a lot. But he's the one utilizing that very very nicely, fighting on two opposite ends of the map right now. Clem making lots more Liberators, lots more Ghosts. In fact, Liberator count is getting grossly scary. He has to be careful with them, obviously. But soon, he can potentially put Liberators at every mining base while still having a good, like, eight or so in the actual fight. Yep. That's a lot of Libs currently spread out all over the place. I mean, Libs have been the problem for Goblin away. Like, he's able to clean them up, but it always costs you a lot to play that cleanup as well, right? So... That has consistently been a part of the problem here, as we see our Stalkers and our Zelts continue to hang around. And I'm just going to be seeing this little bit of bio is actually going to be able to continue chunking through the DTs, just getting chunked down as we go as well. It really hasn't felt like Goblin's been behind 50 supply this entire time, but he has. He's, he's a real warrior, man. He's fighting against the best tech Terran that you can find, and he's still been trading pretty damn good, but I feel... I feel that Clem is finally starting to break him and seeing that recall on the left side really opens up the shop over here and big pickups against these disruptors, big warping as well to try and keep them alive as much as possible. But he is getting broke at this point. He's utilized that whole mineral bank he had and fighting into liberation zones over here. This is a great position for Clem to be in and I think this is the beginning of the end here. But Goblin, what a performance he's put on in map number one. Yep, no, absolutely. He really held on. He really made it a, a game because this really didn't feel like it should have been, right? At the end of the day, this didn't feel like we were kind of aiming for that at all. As we uh, now have ourselves a chance for game number two and get this underway, get this set up and uh, see whether Goblin can actually take a game. I mean, it was such a bad start. What do you think happens if Goblin gets a better start? Surely such a better uh, setup, right? Uh, you know, Goblin, he's, he's always been a player that I've looked at and I've been like, he is incredibly good at doing what he does. Like, incredibly good. Like, the, the Phoenix Colossus stuff, he's always been a massive fan. When it's in the meta, he's one of the, the, the leaders of that meta because he's been doing it even when it's out of meta and stuff. So the fact that he had his third denied for a good, like, three or four minutes and then made it like that. Because remember, like, there was a point where I was saying, I don't think Goblin's really thinking about what, what happens five minutes from now. He really wants to make something happen right now. Mm -hmm. But then it didn't quite work out. It got cleaned up in the middle. But then it's like, hold on a minute. I can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a fully-fledged Terran army with gateway units and disruptors. And he did so damn nicely. Like, it wasn't an easy map. And once it got to a point where it's like, Clem was fighting in that that corridor in the bo in the top left... It made it very hard because that's where liberators shine right where you can't get these flanks on them and I, I think that's where goblins started losing out quite a bit but it also wasn't the cleanest game from clem just because you did sometimes see like an overextension or a big disruptor hit which let's be real we've seen clem so often these days just making disruptors look like they're a terrible unit but goblin the fact that he had so many launching so many all the time that's just cool yeah, it was just non-stop, right? Like, he just started firing away, and he just kept it going. And that was uh, very cool to see as we now happen to game number two. I'm very impressed that Goblin just able to keep it going for so long, because Clem is not an easy player to play against when it comes to that regard. I mean, you imagine taking someone to a scrappy game. Clem is such an active, busy player. He's always all over the map, right? So, uh, pretty big deal. So we're going to start off in the bottom right side this time around. Game two! Can he find himself a game win? It is Goblin. Uh, really good player, a goblin. Honestly, I, I'm I'm impressed. And spawning room top left hand side, representing Team Liquid, it is Clam. What do you think of a game? Do you mean Clam had such a good start? Kind of wild, though. No? It was a really good start. It was a really good start. It was a, a gas first opening, so it was very much banking on getting out those four cyclones very quickly to 
do what he did. And they did a lot, and then the bio push afterwards, so it, was, it felt like every choice that Goblin made up until that point couldn't really deal with what Clem had until a much later stage. But I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Like, I've been out of the top players on the ladder in Europe, so haven't got to play against Goblin a lot uh, over the past uh, few years. But when I used to play against Goblin, I used to feel that, okay, if I can get a good read on what he's doing, then then maybe we can have a close game. But if I don't, and it's like, you know, I just do a regular opening, I'm in a lot of trouble. But I, I'm very curious about how Goblin's future builds are going to be. I'm also, Clem has a whole array of uh, special tactics. Like, he can play the one with a mind drop, the two would have mind any sort of scary opener a single uh marine and barracks on the low ground after all this but I i'm not sure like so far they're playing on very regular maps that we've been uh, seeing quite a lot too so i i think this is more chance for clem to take the 2-0 here playing on a another regular map yeah i think the size of the map obviously uh was a big factor right so the size of the map being so large last time gave Goblin a lot of chances to play all over and to take all the bases. Oceanborn's not a small map, but I think it's a lot more easy to kind of direct traffic in a certain direction, which should take away a lot of the potential that Goblin was playing with last time around. Yeah, like, it, it does look like um, Goblin is still Stargate Boy, um, which Clem is, a, again, a smart enough player to realize these kind of things and do builds that are specifically good against Stargate. Does get confirmation scout just to be like, all right, okay, now I know what I'm up against. And for a Terran, knowing exactly what you're against, even before you scout it, it's so good. Like that second barrack starts up very nice and early, meaning we're gonna have a lot of bio out nice and early. Single Cyclone as well, just helps with initial defense. But I think Clem, like those Phoenix builds are if you do do a heavy barracks play with like any sort of tank push, it's it's really hard for the Phoenix guy. It really is. Yep. No, it's uh, if you know your opponent's going Phoenix, there's a lot of things you can do to really be successful against it, and that's why. I mean, we already saw last game how good Clem was able to be. Now we have those extra barracks. Now we're going to have the bio play going big in the early stages. Goblins have to going to have to be very safe early on, you know. Yeah, and. This game is very different in the sense that Goblin will be able to get out on the map with Phoenix, which is a big deal, let's be real. It, it's a very different scenario, but third barracks coming online now, and it will be the tech labs going down on this factory and the barracks, so quick, quick transition to tech. Once Goblin finds out that this is happening, then, it's, then I'm curious what he's going to do. And is Clem going to go for the switcheroo from that factory? Uh, he actually is. He actually is. So he's going to be using that for a reactor for his starport later on instead. A massive emphasis on just a lot of bio. So I, I'd, I'd imagine that as soon as this robo is finishing, it's going to be a robo bay coming down very soon because the Phoenix, they won't be able to get too much done from this point on. Nope. I mean, you need that robo bay. You need to move into that Colossi quickly. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. Unless you wanted to play like charge or so, but I feel like that's not a good thing to be doing against like a mass bio player here early on. As uh, that is going to be the rubber bay coming up. And stim pack and combat shield coming through. Get that all on the way. Waiting to see yeah. what the plays are going to be. I mean, honestly, as, as the bio upgrades finish, you expect them to be aggressive. So that's probably our next stopping point in this game. Yeah, it's, it's just about how do you do it? Like, because these Phoenix, they do want to be on the aggressive, and oh, that is not what you want, though. And oh my goodness, a, a flawless game one, uh, <laughs> dealing with a horrible situation. That is not it. Not it from Gobbers. Not it at all. That well, is going to be the Robo Bay finishing here then in a second. But yeah, one more Phoenix down is not pretty in the slightest, so that ain't great. And uh, we do just see Stimpak and Combat Shields about to finish up. So this is what yeah. I've been waiting for. We're waiting for this Bioforce to come. It's going to be that time in a couple of moments. Yeah, and Clem is going to go for the reactor on this factory. So I think that usually sig signals that he's going to be doing quite a lot of drop stuff um, in the near future. Like tanks, they're good for the blob army. Wood mine's far better for the drop stuff and getting nice defense set up as well. This Observer comes in fairly late because he's been scouting with the Phoenix and will be in a nice spot at the front here just to check on what's going on. But 
These medevacs, they could be very scary if left untouched, and Goblin has to be very quick and make a lot of judgment calls here, because those Phoenix, they have absolutely missed this move out. Yeah, he's completely missed these two medevacs, and the Phoenix aren't going to be at home. The Colossi, well, there's one out, I believe, so that's nice, but I actually think there's a little corner here we can drop in as well, where you can just unload, but he's going to unload right in the mineral line. The probes do pull instantly, that is necessary. Then begins to stim, and what's he going to target? He could go for the Robo Bay, for example. He's just going to take down a couple of units, warp it in. The probes Ooh. come back! No, Goblin, no! He's just going to gift his opponent an opportunity, and that is now suddenly 14 workers down, and the rest of the army moving towards the third base. This is going to start looking scary as Goblin's completely out of position, and Clem, oh, there's not even a... Okay, there's one bat to the far right side, but that means Clem can fight over to the left without the super battery reaching the army. Yeah, and this is a scary Terran army. Like, plus one's about to finish up. All you need is a handful of Marauders to really make short work of those Colossus and just tank the damage. And look at this. He's just like, all right, which, where do I want to fight exactly? He's got one medevac with that army. Goblin knows there's a lot of bio on the map, but work account, it's looking bad for Goblin this game. And he moves over here. He's like, oh, there's an army here, right? And it's like, yeah, there is, but where's the rest of it? And boom, into this natural. And Gobbers, ah... Uh, from, a, from a, an amazing first game, look at the resources lost up this game. This is this is far more in line <laughs> with what I thought would probably happen. But my goodness, it's... Uh, yeah, that first drop getting away, the Phoenix, you can't allow that to happen. You really can't. A Reaper, two Marines, and just now a Widow Mine died as well. I mean, that is a ridiculous set of trade for everything that Clem has found so far. That is uh, actually a little crazy. Yeah, and, and th this is some of the power of kind of knowing what you're going to be playing before you actually play it. He probably had in mind that, okay, I'm going to go for three racks before the game's even begun against Goblin, just because having a lot of bio is good against Phoenix plays, and, you know, losing that first Phoenix really puts the, the fright in the Protoss in what you can do and get away with, and yeah, we're looking at this kind of scenario now. Yeah, I mean, kind of surprised. I mean, I guess I'm not surprised that Clem didn't really kind of keep the pressure going. He's still on the map. He's still going to be able to look for opportunities. I mean, Goblin's going to get some more air, uh, splash units out with the Colossus Count still growing, and we also have the Temple Archives coming in. But Clem's also hitting that kind of double tech moment where you get the Vikings and the Ghost out, so his next push is going to be powered up with tech, and that might just be the road to victory for Clem here to kind of take this series and just run away with it. Yeah, even though the start wasn't as bad for Goblin this game, uh, if you ignore that Phoenix loss kind of situation, it definitely hasn't been a a nice situation for Goblin at all. Like, he is so behind in every field, and he's, he's stuck on three bases as well. Like, he wants to take a fourth base right now. This army looks amazingly uh, meek and meager, doesn't it? Like, it's just not big at all he's, he's really relying on something going terrible for clem and even getting these archons on the field it's like okay that's good but there's ghosts and and plenty of them as well just marching across the map yep i mean everything's here really already from clem he's going to open up some rocks he has a more direct reinforcement pathway as well and uh well, again, a couple of templates coming up. Armor upgrade coming through. This army starts to press in. A couple of archons at the front will start taking some damage. Widowmine clips off over to the side. I mean, again, show me the numbers here, Goblin. Show me the army that's somehow meant to survive through this. The prism's about to go down. The colossus I already hurt, and the EMPs have been great across the board. Everything will melt, and this is very one-sided. Clem did way too well in this game, and he is going to be able to take a 2-0 here. No way to draw this out or to buy time like...